Hey guys, so just a quick thing before we actually get into the video. Uh, you are going to see a complete outfit change, complete hair change, everything um, from the beginning of the video and about three quarters of the way through. If that bugs you, I'm very sorry. You can go ahead and skip the video if you want to. Um, I, my feelings will not be hurt. I will explain a little more because I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of a life's update at the end of this video. So if you would like to figure out why <laughs> my outfit changed in the middle of this video, then go ahead and stick around. Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be wrapping up the month of January. The month of January was pretty good for me. I read a total of eight books and I it was a pretty good reading month. I actually really enjoyed quite a few of the books that I read. I read some books that I have been wanting to read for a while but have been putting off. I only bought one of them but I didn't even buy it in the month of January. I bought it a couple months ago and was finally able to read it. So technically these were all on my shelves. I got three for review, but they had still been sitting on my shelf for a couple days before I picked them up. So I'm very proud. I started off the month of January not buying any books. Keep in mind, I said started off January. I did end up buying books, but you will see that at some point, I'm sure. Anyways, that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is to show you what I read this month. And I'm very proud of myself because I have my phone ready, so I have my actual star review rating by me. I'm always guessing because I can never remember because I always forget to grab my phone to have it with me. So I have it all set up. So I'll give you the actual star rating. But of course, you can check out all of my reviews and all of my ratings for these books on Goodreads. And you can follow me there too because I would love to have more friends because I need them. My link is in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I read for the month of January was The Lace Maker by Laura France. And this is based in 1775, I believe, around the beginning of America and like the Revolutionary War and the Independence Men and all the things that made America what it is now. And this is following Lady Elizabeth Lawson and Noble Reinault. And Lady Elizabeth is the daughter of an English lieutenant governor and Noble is an independence man. So, <laughs> you can kind of see if you know anything about American history, then you know that those two did not get along at this time. Um, I actually gave this book a 4 out of 5 star. Um, it was okay, in my opinion. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't the best book I've ever read. And here is why. Again, this book is about early American history, and I love that time period, and I love learning about that time period. However, I do not enjoy reading fiction about it. This is the first book that I've read by Laura, and I loved her writing style, which is the redeeming factor. There were some elements that were redeeming factors, which gave it a 4 out of 5 star. How Ever, I wasn't a fan of the time period in which this was in or based around. I find that I am more of an 1800s kind of girl, early 1900s. I lean more towards that time period um, just because I found that this is set and she writes in very close relation with real people. Um, you see close contact with Patrick Henry and you see close contact, contact with George Washington and other real men who really helped and shaped America and made America the colony and the country that it is. So, it was just really weird. I was really having to try and go what's fact, what's fiction, and when I'm reading a fiction book, I don't want to have to really think about the 
history, history behind, like the real history behind it. I know that sounds weird as somebody who loves historical. I love history and I love learning and knowing history. I don't want a history lesson, like a full length history lesson while I'm reading a work of fiction. Because if I wanted that, I could pick up a biography or I could pick up a nonfiction book. So that's was the main downfall to me for this. But I know a ton of people who absolutely adored this book. I have a good friend of mine that loved it. She like couldn't wait and she picked it up because she had to have it because this is a time period that she enjoys. So matter of personal opinion, matter of time periods that people enjoy, this just wasn't really for me, but I did end up giving it a 4 out of 5 star, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who enjoys early American history. I did review this on my blog, so I will link the link to that specific review down in the description box below if you would like to check it out. The next book that I read in the month of January was Unblemished by Sarah Ella. <sighs> okay, this was actually a book club pick for a book club that I'm part of online and it's been sitting on my shelf since October I believe um, I got it in my big October haul it has been sitting on my shelves and I keep like scanning over it. I'm like I'm gonna read that that looks so good I'm going to read this and then I just don't <laughs> But it was picked for the January choice of the book club, so I had to pick it up, right? And oh my word, I don't know what made me wait so long to read it. It was so good. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 star. This is a young adult dystopian based in New York, but there is also things called reflections. And they go into the second reflection, I believe, in the book, and it is... New York but in a different world it's different layout there is actually a map you're not gonna be able to see my camera doesn't like to focus automatically but there is a map where you get the the map of New York as she sees it and as in um, her personal life and then you see the second reflection and what would line up with what in New York to the sacred reflection. It's following Eliana who finds, who is born with a blemish that covers the side of her face. It is a birthmark and a, she's from, this is like getting all mumbo jumbo, I'm sorry, I'm trying to explain this, but she was born in the second reflection but she doesn't know about this until her almost 18th birthday. She does not find out about where she originally came from. So she was raised in New York and going to school and you know she's just seeing all these beauty standards that this birthmark on the side of her face is ugly and nobody will love her for it and they'll hate her and just it's gross and that's what she grew up hearing. But her blemish is actually could be the saving grace for the second reflection. So there is an epic battle of good versus evil and they get there and they're just fighting to save her life and to save the second reflection. And then we enter Caiaphas or Kai and uh, Team Kai all the way guys, Team Kai this has a very very strong love triangle. Um, between Ileana and Joshua and Ileana and Caiaphas and um, if you've read it what team are you? I would really like to know. Uh, Joshua is her guardian, technically her guardian angel type thing in the beginning and he follows her around and he's just trying to keep her safe and I'll give you this, Caiaphas was a bad boy in the beginning and that is all I'm going to say. You definitely, definitely, definitely need to read this. I have book two, which is Unraveling, and I need to read it, but I am not mentally prepared for it because this book gave me a serious book hangover, and of course, I picked it up like the second day of January because I finished Lace Maker pretty quick, and I picked it up like the second or third day of January, and it was like out for a week. 
man, I was struggling so hard to pick up another book, but I had to force myself and keep pushing through. But it was so good. I definitely do want to finish the series and see how it wraps up. And definitely check out this book. Um, I recommend it for pretty much anyone. I'm not a YA reader technically or normally. And I definitely love this. And because of it, I'm definitely going to pick up a couple different YA books. This was so good. The next book that I read in the month of January was The Ladies of Ivy Cottage by Julie Clausen, and this is book two of her series, Tales from Ivy Hill. I need book three now. I need to see how this ends. Ugh, I love... I love series that go hand in hand and just kind of like flow into the next book, but at the same time, I have to wait until it comes out. It would be so much easier if we were just talking about somebody else and everybody's lives tied up at the end of the book, and then I just get to revisit the town again in the next book. But no, storylines are left open and dangling, and I just can't handle it. So I need book three, I need it to be December, or I just need an advanced reader's copy in my hands so I can read and type the story. But that's time about book three. This is book two. I read book one in December, I want to say, and really enjoyed it. And then I finally got to book two. And I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This book is actually um, focusing a little more on Mercy Groves and Rachel Ashford. And it focuses on both of them pretty equally. And then you get to see Jane again. And you get to see Mr. Drake again. And somebody marry the man. Because if you don't, I will. Um, also, Mr. Ashford, uh, Rachel's distant distant cousin he better find a love he better find a lady friend he better find a wife because the guy is literally the sweetest man and my heart just couldn't take it in book two I just he needs to find a wife little spoiler Rachel doesn't end up with him they don't get married and praise the Lord above because they just weren't right for each other. And like I know that like the whole distant cousin things like they got married back in that day. But just no. No. I'm so glad it didn't happen. Um, I will say that Rachel did get just a smidge annoying. Um, she held on to an old love for a very, 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 very long time. And I mean, in the end, it worked out for her, but it just got, like, it was kind of tedious. It just kind of felt like it just, like, was never going to end type thing. And I'm glad that they wrapped up her story in this book, but she didn't wrap up Jane's story in this book. And that means that I have to wait till December to figure it out because I love the guy that she's written for her technically and I just need it to happen and I need to know what happens to Mercy and I just, I need to know. I did definitely fall in love with this town. I definitely fell in love with the characters and that is a, all the props to Julia Klassen for writing um, characters in a town that just draws you in. Even though they can get a little annoying and some of their like antics can get a little tedious. I'm just like, okay, we get you. You definitely love them and you can't wait to visit them again. So I definitely did enjoy this one. I think I actually might have enjoyed book one a little more than this one. Um, but I will hold out my full assessment until book three comes out and I can read it and then I will talk a little more about which one's my favorite and all the things. The next book that I read was Love on the Line by Deanna Gist. I rated this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Yeah, it was cute, but it was a little romancy. Um, 
which is a lot coming from me. I love a good cheesy romance. I I don't mind romance books that it's my love. Like I would prefer romance over anything. But this one got a little much. Um, Deanna Gist is kind of like that. I've read a couple of her other books and noticed that they're a little more romance. They lean a little more romancy than others. But this one was... Hmm. This is following a switchboard operator, Georgie Gale, and a Texas Ranger, Lucius Landum, who actually went undercover as a switchboard operator type repairman named Luke Palmer. Luke is on the hunt for a gang of train robbers, and it leads him to the switchboard operator in this cute little town. Um, it was cute. The storyline was cute. The dialogue was fun. The romance, on the other hand, it was just a lot. Um, there was a lot of things that are deemed inappropriate during this time and definitely, definitely wrong that seemed, there seemed to be no consequences for their actions. Um, there was a lot of times when like they would be alone way past um, dark they would just be at her house just sit, either like it doesn't matter that nothing happened but in this time her reputation would have been shattered um there were even a couple times where kissing got a little steamy and um again nothing happened but your imagination goes places that it doesn't need to go and it just, I guess the historical accuracy of the romance is really, really, really what got me. Um, because again, nothing really happened, but her reputation would have been shattered. And he should have known better whether he was a Texas Ranger or not. And they're kind of known in the, the Westerns to be rough and rowdy. But he was still a gentleman. He was still super sweet. But, you know, it just... Attraction was pretty quick, and then they were just kind of like throwing themselves at each other, but they weren't. They were trying to... I don't know. I don't know. I just... The romance was a lot for me. Um, but at the end, the plot twist, I kind of saw coming just when he gave a little bit of his backstory, but I was still really pleasantly surprised, and the ending was so cute, so sweet. And I wish there was a secondary book to this because the epilogue leaves you kind of wishing that there was. It just kind of like leaves so many doors open and so many ties not tied and just ugh. I wish there was a secondary book, but there isn't that I know of. But in the end, I liked it, but I didn't love it, so I gave it a 3.75. The next book is Death by the Book by Juliana Deering, and this is book two in the Drew Farthering Mysteries. I read book one in the sem no, November. Yes, November. It is talked about in my November wrap-up. And I love this book just as much, if not a little more, than book one. Um, I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And, of course, this is Drew Fathering and Madeline. The family solicitor is murdered, and there's a hat pin in his chest with a um, letter attached to his chest. And then after that, there's a string of murders, all with the same signature, the hat pin with, the, um, with different quotes on their chest. A little gruesome but I was all about it. The plot twist, the murderer, I cannot tell you. Juliana Deering, she can write a mystery, let me tell you. She can write a murderer, she can write the plot twist, but still keep it fun and still keep it light and cozy, and I love it so much. I love Drew with all of my heart, and Madeline finally said yes to the guy. Uh, throughout the whole book, she was being such a tease, and she was being so obnoxious and like, well, I don't know, and just blah, 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 oh, man. No, marry him. He's perfect. Like, I understand they technically only known each other for a couple months, but I don't even care. 
like just Marion. Um, and I need Nick at some point in the series. I haven't read anymore, so I don't know if it happens. But I need Nick to find somebody. I need him to be my best friend. Hey, I'll marry him. Like, I love him. I love Drew. He's so charming and so sweet. And I just love the characters. And I'm just flipping this all around because I'm so excited. Um, but I thought the murder was someone else. Going back to the fact that she can write a murder. I thought the murder was someone else. I felt it in my bones. Like, we had dinner. We were having dinner as a family. And, like, I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to read it. I wanted to figure out who it was because I thought I knew. But I'm like, no, it can't be. That's kind of too easy. But then some, something happened. I'm like, no, it has to be this person. And then I was like, well, I don't know. And then I was just like, but I still don't know who it was. It's like ten pages till the end of the book. And I still wasn't sure. So I, like, ate a couple bites and then excused myself from the table. My dad was lovely enough to let me go. He normally does it. And I, like, curled up in bed and stayed up until I finished the book. I mean, there was only a couple pages. I finished it in a couple minutes. But I was so surprised by the murderer. And the motive was ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I was living for it. So definitely, definitely, if you haven't, pick up the series but yes the covers are beautiful the time period is fun uh, i believe this the 1920s or the 1930s i can't remember but it's around you know the early 1920s 1900s and i really really enjoyed it so yes this is the next book that i read and i'm in a 4.5 and i can't wait to read the next ones but next book is heart on the line by karen whitmeyer I rated this book a 5 out of 5 stars because, I mean, it's Carol Meyer and I love her books and the story was actually really cute. This is following Grace Mallory, who is in hiding at the moment, but she is a, a telegraph operator and she becomes friends with this guy over the telegraph and his name is Amos, Amos Bledsoe. And, and it was great. It's like Pen Pals 1800s version. Like online dating, but 1800s version. It was fabulous. The little quirk about our Mr. Amos is he's not an ordinary hero. He prefers riding bikes to horses. He wears spectacles and he's not the normal Texas brawny man's man. <coughs> Why is... Excuse me for a moment. This is the second book in the Ladies of Harper Station. This is the, um, technically the third installation in the series, but the second full-length novel. And, um, I really enjoyed it. I loved the... <laughs> I loved Amos. I loved Grace. I did not trust. I I knew. I just, I felt it in my bones. I didn't trust one of the characters and I was right. If you know what I'm talking about, leave the little emoji. I'll put it here. The, like, the devil emoji with, like, the smirk. Yeah, leave that one if you know what I'm talking about. Which character it was that you didn't trust in the beginning. I really liked it. I loved the aspect that Amos wasn't a normal hero and Grace wasn't a normal main character. She wasn't that damsel in distress, I can't do anything by myself. She was a very strong, independent woman and I really, really enjoyed this book a lot and I give it a 5 out of 5 stars and I was very excited to see Grace find a happily ever after. I also really enjoyed that I got to see um, a couple of the characters from the first book. You got to see Malachi and Emma again and I absolutely loved them. They were probably my favorite part. I love Malachi. I love Emma. So I loved being able to see them again. But yes, I definitely did enjoy this fancy, fancy story. The next book is The Lady and the Lionheart by Joanne Bischkoff. I really liked this book. 
Um, I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this was one of the books that was really hyped up on social media. It was super hyped on Facebook and a lot of the groups that I'm in. Um, not so much Instagram that I saw. Like, I saw a couple people. But it was very, very hyped up on the Facebooks. Um, I, it took me forever, for stinking ever, to get my hands on a copy. And finally, I was blessed to get a copy and it's actually signed and I'm so excited. But I really, really enjoyed it. It was definitely worth the hype. I, here's why I didn't rate it a 5 out of 5 stars. Um... I actually was not a huge fan of Ella, who is our main character. We should probably talk about that. Ella is our main character, and Charlie Lionheart. <gasps> Charlie! I, every, every girl who's read this book is instantly in love with Charlie, and I was not immune to his charms and his wonderful character. But I just, I don't know, I wasn't a fan of Ella. Like, not a whole lot. Sorry, not gonna lie. Um, she was just kind of, her character kind of fell flat. Like, I felt all of Charlie's emotions through the pages, like they jumped out at me. I felt, he felt like a full character, while Ella just felt flat, and she felt very two-dimensional. Um, there were some emotions that I felt from her, I felt some of her things, but I didn't feel everything. Like, I didn't feel her heartbreak, and I didn't feel her agony, and I just, like, I didn't feel these things that I wanted to feel so bad, and I didn't feel these things that I thought I should have felt and she got better like she was definitely a character who changed throughout the story um, Joanne did a wonderful job about giving them both backstories and giving them elements that were very human and things that can happen definitely definitely a wonderful book it touches on hope and redemption and some bits it talks on sexual assault and loss and just so many things it's a great story full of hope and love and just it's everybody should read it I loved it and I loved that it was about the circus I I just I don't know I loved it I loved being behind the scenes through the circus I really enjoyed it I loved Charlie I loved all of it and I definitely am looking forward to reading other books by Miss Joanne. She cover is gorgeous like hello I can't remember who she said did the cover but they did a fabulous job. I'll just say that. Claps to you. Loved it. The last book that I have read and finished for the month of January was The Rancher's Temporary Engagement by Stacey Henry. This is a love inspired historical and as you can see, I have quite a few tabs in there. I give this a 4 out of 5 star, and I actually don't have a review up on Goodreads at this moment. I should on Friday. I am actually a part of the blog tour for this because this did just come out. This came out in February, so it came out this month. So you should definitely check that out. My I really, really like this book. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here because I want you guys to read it and get the full effect on the blog if you would like to. And I believe there's also going to be a giveaway in the blog and all the people, all the stops. So how exciting. Anyways, <laughs> this is about Edward Kent and Miss Maggie Worthering. And Miss Maggie is actually a Pinkerton agent. <gasps> How funny, female Pinkerton agent. And Edward is actually a handsome English gentleman who is living in America and he is trying his hand at cattle ranching. And some incident ha incidents happen that he has to hire a Pinkerton agent. And Miss Maggie always gets her man. And so she is sent to Wyoming and it just takes off from there. there this deals with wonderful, wonderful things. Um, Maggie is super strong in this courageous, fabulous lady, this woman, and Edward is this wonderful gentleman, but they both have so much hurt and pain, and they have both been abused in previous relationships. Whether it was family or marital, it's just... It was great. I love the plots where there's fake engagements or temporary engagements. I just, 
love something about him. It just makes me so happy. I loved him. So I definitely did enjoy this book. And if you'd like to hear more about it, please, please check out my blog on Friday, February 9th, where I will be helping finish and wrap up the blog tour for this book. It was definitely a cute read, and I loved the banter between them, and I definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Right, that was it for my wrap-up. I read a total of eight books, which I'm pretty sure I've already talked about, eight books in the month of January. And I was very, very proud of myself for reading that many, um, especially because there was a point in the month where I kind of got in this little slump type thing, but I'm glad that I pushed through it and I kept reading because I really, really enjoyed the books that I read in the month of January. Alright, so now for a couple life updates. If you're not interested in this, that is okay. But I thought that I should let you guys know what's kind of been going on and why this video is ridiculously late. So, I don't, I'm not sure if I talked about it. I think I did. But my grandma actually moved from Illinois and she actually moved very, very close to my family in Indiana. She actually moved pretty much right across the street from us. Um, so through the month of January, we were going over to Illinois a lot. We were packing up her house and then a couple weeks later, we were actually moving her from Illinois to Indiana. But there were still some small things left at the house. It's just been crazy and hectic. Well, on Wednesday, um, when I actually started filming this, I was actually going to be a clip, I think I kept it, where you'll see that I actually get a phone call in the middle of one of the books. And it was actually from my aunt who was here. She had been very, very sick uh, Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday, and she was still kind of weak but they had to come over to help my grandma finish moving some stuff over. So I went over there and helped them unpack my grandma's car, and my grandma asked if I wanted to go back to Illinois with her so I could help her finish cleaning up her house and finish up a few things because the realtor was going to be there and there were going to be some showings. So I was really worried because I had to work on Thursday, um, and I was like, well, as long as I get home by 4, I'm like, yeah, no, we should be home by, like, noon. My aunt's house and we were relaxing we stayed there for the duration of our time because we had to my grandma has no furniture at her house so we were at my aunt's and wednesday night my grandma got ridiculously ridiculously sick she caught the stomach bug that had been plaguing my aunt all earlier that week so my grandma was super super sick wednesday night and i felt awful and then Thursday rolled around and there was no way that she would have been able to make the drive, which is totally understandable. So I actually had to call off work. My sister got my Thursday shift cover. We were planning on going home on Friday, finding a way home. We were going to get there. <sighs> so grandma gets a little better. She, I was fine Wednesday and Thursday. I was great. I was happy, but I was still ready to go home. I wanted to finish my video. I wanted to get a blog. I was so upset. I didn't have it ready and I just wanted to be home. Um, I just had like this feeling about the whole thing on Wednesday, like maybe I shouldn't go. <sighs> Next time people, here's a life lesson for you. Listen to your instincts. Because Friday morning I woke up and I in fact caught the terrible stomach bug, stomach flu, whatever it was that was in that house and I was so sick. Like you know when you're sick, you just want to be home and you want to be by your parents, you want to be by your mom and your dad. Well I wasn't. I was an hour and a half away and I was at my aunt's house and I felt terrible because there were seven people in a relatively smaller house. Ugh, it was just awful. Um, I never thought it was going to end in actual reality. It was only a couple hours long. It was still the longest day of my life. Friday night I got a ton better and we were able to actually come home on Saturday and I was so thankful. I was so ready to be home. I still wasn't, like, I was feeling 10,000% better, but I was still really, really, really weak. So now it's just, now it's Monday that I'm filming this, so hopefully it goes up. If not today, tomorrow. Hopefully, we shall see. Uh, just back to getting my full strength up. That's kind of what's been going on right now. On top of it, I haven't, literally have not been able to read a thing since 
February. It's February 6th today, 5th, and I haven't been able to read anything. February is kind of off to a rocky start reading wise, and I have quite a few books that I need to read and review, so I just need to buck up and get it going and read and maybe we'll see how many books I actually read because it's the shortest month of the year and we're already struggling we're like we shall see about my February wrap up video I don't know <laughs> as for my TBR this month I will of course just be probably focusing on review books and getting those done for the month of February um, and I think that's about it. I'm not trying to give myself a strict TBR because we've already established that I don't stick to those. I'm no good at those. So we're not going to do them anymore. <laughs> Yay. And a blog should be up, hopefully, uh, when this video goes up at some point. If not, if for some reason I miss it completely for last week, there will be a blog on the 9th, which is this Friday, and hopefully another video. But we'll see. I have to see how my schedule works out. <laughs> but the vlog will actually be a vlog tour, which of course is a review for the last book that I read in the month of January. So be on the lookout for that. Of course, it is again for love christianfiction.blogspot.com where I post normally if I can every Friday. And I'm on Instagram for the love of Christian fiction where I have been getting very good about posting pictures. I'm very, very proud of myself. So go to, you can go ahead and give me a follow there if you want. I mean, hey, it's free. And of course, all my other links are in the description box below. Follow me on Goodreads if you're ever interested in seeing what I think in full, full detail on there. And I'd love to be friends with you. I'd love to chat. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the books that I read. And I think that's it. Hopefully I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys.